you get the idea. This is the project I have been working on for over a year. It's taken dozens of failed prototypes, hundreds of hours of labor, and a few thousand dollars, but I think I finally have what might just be the world's first condiment cannon. Now, in order to tell this story, we first have to go back to the beginning and answer the most important question I've ever asked. What condiment makes the best projectile? Of course, this answer turns out to be slightly more complicated than you would think. Now, if you've ever been to a fast food joint, you know that there are two different types of sauce packet. For something like fries and ketchup, you have the original squeeze variety. These are great if you want to selectively apply sauce to something, but in terms of ammunition, mm, I don't think this is it. They're squishy, hard to design for, and I think there's a better option. That's why for more serious sauce applications like a nugget, we invented the dipping cup. These I think are going to be the ticket because not only do they have a rigid structure, but they're also uniform in size. What this should allow me to do is stack them on top of each other and put them in a magazine so that I can have a rapid firing condiment cannon. The only problem though is that I don't think the engineers were considering the aerodynamics of these when they made them. Upon closer inspection, you'll notice that these are pretty tall, which means they'll induce a lot of drag in flight. Furthermore, the sides of these containers are pretty thin, which means they'll deform really easily. What's interesting is that even across restaurant chains, they still use the same packaging, which makes me think there's a single manufacturer for the cups and they just swap out the label. There is one exception, however, and that's from a certain chicken themed restaurant who understands that a good condiment packet is one that can be hurled across the room. Their design has a low, wide profile with thick walls that shouldn't deform under acceleration. This, I think, will make it a far better projectile than these tall, skinny packets made by the other companies. In order to put this to the test, though, I'm going to have to come up with a launcher design that doesn't explode these condiment packets all over the place. And if you grew up playing baseball, like I did, you might recognize this design from the pitching machines they use in places like batting cages. These work by using two motors to drive spinning discs placed slightly closer together than the width of a baseball. That way, when the ball is fed into the spinning wheels, friction grabs it and it's flung out the front of the machine. What I'm going to do is shrink this concept down and use these spinning wheels to grab the sides of a condiment packet and fling that out the front as opposed to a baseball. So with that in mind, I threw together a design using four motors to maximize launch speed before putting everything together and wiring it up. The motors did make some concerning noises when I turned everything on, but more importantly, it didn't work. This was also right around the time I discovered the holy grail of condiment packets, single serve jelly. Not only did they have an even smaller footprint, but they also weren't as obnoxiously asymmetrical like the other ones. Encouraged by my new choice in ammunition, I designed another launch platform that used high-speed drone motors, which was a little annoying because I now had to fold ESCs into the mix to make them work. This design, however, did succeed in making an even more concerning noise and also not working. By this point, I figured my main problem was a lack of acceleration due to the small point of contact between the wheels and the condiment packet. So to fix that, I switched over to a belt-based design, with the idea being the motors would now maintain contact with the packets longer and thus accelerate them faster. And this was looking very promising, right up until friction melted every single component in the design. So I did the sensible thing and spent a few hundred dollars on all metal components before reassembling the launch platform for what had to be the 10th time. And it was with this version that I succeeded in creating the worst sound known to man. It also didn't work. As you can imagine, I was starting to feel discouraged, but that was until I remembered the first rule of engineering. Bigger is better. Which meant the drone motors were out and a pair of 2800 watt brushless motors were in. Despite being rated for 36 volts, I decided to tempt fate and overvolt them to 48 for a little extra kick. To actually fling the condiments, I printed out a pair of 6 inch diameter discs that I then lined in rubber for better grip. I then laser cut each piece of the frame out of acrylic, glued them all together, and mounted the motors into place. After all of the assembly, we have finally hit one of my favorite parts, and that's where I get to test and see whether or not this condiment cannon launcher mechanism actually works. Uh, this thing scares me a little bit. It's uh, some pretty large motors running at relatively high voltages, so hopefully I don't lose a finger, but we'll find out. I'm just gonna first power everything on. All right, this is a moment of truth.
<laughs> I'm... <laughs> That's what I would call a pretty successful test, and I am so relieved because I've been working for months, prototype after prototype, trying to get this dialed in, and I finally have something that will launch these packets the way I want. I think now what I need to do is integrate in the rest of the components and turn this into something a little bit more, um, you know, ca cannon shaped as opposed to this flat testing platform. Hopefully, probably making it a little bit safer. These spinning wheels with no covers is making me a little bit nervous, but either way, now we can move on to the next step. At this stage, I needed a method to load the condiment packets into the spinning wheels that could be controlled by the pull of a trigger. And the solution I landed on was using a solenoid to push each round out of a magazine and into the wheels. As you can see, our firing test platform is all complete, and obviously, any self-respecting condiment cannon has to be semi-automatic or even fully automatic. So what I wanna make sure is that when I load all of these condiments into the magazine and pull the trigger, I can just hold it and this hammer will automatically fire them into the launching wheels. So I'm gonna put all of these into the actual magazine and then we're gonna hook this up and hopefully get these flying across the room at least at the first stage. Of course, the finished product is gonna be fully portable and run on batteries, but for now, I'm just using my benchtop power supply to fire the solenoid. So I'm gonna hook this bad boy up and Let's see if we can get these to go across the table. <laughs> well, this is a really good start. None of our jelly packets got jammed, and best of all, I can now take this design and integrate it into the rest of the build. What I'll do next is use a microcontroller so that when I hold the trigger down, we'll get fully automatic firing out of our condiment cannon. To house everything, I then spent the next three weeks in CAD designing all the different components that would make up the finished cannon. And yes, I know that color scheme looks familiar, but that's only because I have an aesthetic to maintain. Meanwhile, with all the parts starting to get printed, it was time to build the electronics for the firing control system. And I figured, why not go all out by building an entire graphical interface to display ammo remaining and the voltage of the battery. In the finished version, I even added a readout to show what firing mode the cannon was in as well as a cutoff for when the LiPo batteries got too low. To run all of this, I went with the newly released ESP32-0 due to its small size and dual core architecture. This allowed me to program the OLED display functions on one core and the solenoid control on the other, keeping lag to a minimum. By this point, all the parts had finished printing, so I begrudgingly started the sanding process, which took about a week because there were a lot of components. With that out of the way, I could now apply a few coats of filler primer before finally starting on the paint. To make all the decals, I just used my vinyl cutter and stuck everything on by hand. All that was left now was to start working on the final assembly. So the first step is building our frame. And to do this, I'm using 15 millimeter camera rods. Now, normally we use these in film to mount focus motors, lens supports, and other GAC to a camera. What makes them so great is that they're hollow, which means they're light but strong. For this build, I'm using these rods to run the entire length of the cannon so I can slide all the parts into place. This keeps all the different parts of the barrel aligned and keeps them from sagging. For the motor base plate, I turned to this video sponsor, PCBWay, to get it cut out of quarter inch thick aluminum since I wanted to make sure the motors weren't going anywhere. PCBWay provides the perfect place to get CNC machined or laser cut parts so you can bring your own creative ideas to life without breaking the bank. To learn more and to support the people who support me, check out the link in the description. So after throwing a coat of paint on it, the plate was ready to mount on top of the 15 millimeter rods, thus completing the main framework of the cannon. Next up was mounting all the electronics, and to keep everything looking clean, I designed some hidden channels throughout the frame so I could run all the wires out the back. While mounting the ESC board and motors, I realized I completely underestimated how much clearance was needed below the motor mount. Once everything was connected, it was an extremely tight fit, and in some places, the motors only had a few millimeters of clearance. Next was mounting the solenoid before screwing on the push arm that would fire the condiments out of the magazine and into the spinning wheels. With all the wires run, I could attach the rear stock and give the firing mechanism a test. Then it was time to put the discs onto the motors and screw the trigger assembly into place. By now, I was in the home stretch, and all that was left was the barrel and a few accessories. To mount the electronics, I opted to, rather unceremoniously, cram them into the rear stock and call it a day. Now the scope I picked is objectively overkill, but I think it fits the look, so we're keeping it. And at this point, it looks like we have a completed condiment cannon, right? 
Not even close. We gotta dirty this thing up. As with most of my builds, I like to give things a little bit of character, and the only way to do that is by scuffing our brand new paint. It's an arduous process, but I think taking the time to add some weathering can be the difference between something looking like a toy instead of the real thing. With that, the condiment cannon is finally complete, which can only mean one thing. <laughs> it's time to test this stupid thing. This looks sick. I'm so excited. All right, I've got my ammunition, my jammo, if you will. And this takes roughly six rounds, which is, which is pretty good. I was going to make a bigger magazine, but then it would get in the way of the scope. So I'm going to load these in. And they are keyed, funny enough. And I'm going to turn this on. And I'm kind of nervous. It's been a long time in the making. So we'll see if this actually works the way I think it will. All right, let's arm this thing. All right, here we go. This is it. One of them got stuck in there, hold on. That might be a problem. Oh yeah, that's in there. I definitely realized that I should have made this with an easier to access like firing chamber, because this is really gonna be a pain uh, every single time if I have to like cram something down the barrel if it jams. Hindsight 2020. Oh yeah, that's in there. That's our first casualty. Well, at least it didn't explode inside the gun. That would have been catastrophic. All right, no more messing around. Now it's time for fully automatic. Let's see if this thing can do it. Yes! That's incredible. <laughs> this... <laughs> All right, I'm reloading because we absolutely need to see that again. Here we go, fully automatic round two. Never gets old. This is so loud. And my parents wonder why I'm single. We have it. This is a fully automatic condiment cannon. Um, I think the logical next step is to set up some targets and do some target shooting with this. Obviously. Listen, I think we can all agree toast has had it too good for too long. So let's see if we can change that. Hey, that got one. <laughs> well, this is definitely about as accurate as I thought it would be, but we got all the toast, and we even split one in half, so I'll take it. Imagine if you went to a restaurant, ordered jam, and they just shot it at you. I don't know, could be a big market. What I want to see now, though, is how does this do at long range? Or, well, long range, let's be real. So I set up a target, and as you can imagine... It took a few tries. But having already seen toast split in two earlier, I'd come up with a whole new idea. Now, I know you might be asking, well, who would need to fire condiments at someone? And to that I say, you've clearly never been to a Waffle House. <laughs> Now that I have this, I think one of my next builds is going to be making a sidearm to complete this loadout. Either way, this build has been so much fun. I love bringing crazy ideas like this to life, and who knows, maybe these will become standard issue at restaurants nationwide, unless you guys have a better idea of what to use it for. Let me know down below. Now, if any of you want to mess with the CAD models I created for this project, I'll be making all those files available on my website. Links for that in the description. If you have any questions about the build, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer as many as I can. On that note, thank you so much for watching and be sure to stay tuned for future builds.